Let me read to you a passage from the 12th chapter of St. Mark's Gospel. This is 28 to 34. It's the Gospel for Thursday of the ninth week of ordinary time. St. Mark writes, One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, well said, teacher, you are right in saying, he is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. That's from Mark chapter 12, verse 28 to 34. We are led to think of loving God. You know, if we allow our minds to roam and survey the scene of the world, the scene of world literature, and to think of its poems, its drama, its stories, its novels, one great theme stands out before us. It is human love. Popular songs exult in love. Popular novels, in one form or another, recount the story of human love. Now this is natural because man is made for love. He is called to have love fill his life. It is manifest that the key to happiness is love. And this is even reflected in, in an unreasoning way in the animal world in which animals accompany one another. They act as companions and generally live not in isolation, but in a social setting. The question is, what kind of love will bring true human happiness? Because a further theme in the history and literature of mankind is the tragedy and the travesty of much of human love. In popular romance, be it in television and movies, the love that is often depicted is scarcely love at all, but mere passing lust. The question that arises is, therefore, what guidance does the good God give us about the instinctive desire he has implanted in our nature to find love and to give it? Well, our Lord is explicit on the point, and he places love at the very heart of all God's commandments to man. In this sense, our gospel passage that I read is a fundamental text of the New Testament. It reveals the plan of God for man and gives the key to the understanding of the scriptures. One of the scribes, a person who studied assiduously the Old Testament with all its commandments and laws, we read, came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? Without any hesitation, our Lord gave the answer. The first is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Mark chapter 12, verse 28 to 34. So every human being is called by God to love with all his heart. But the object of this love must in the first place be God himself. This is what is generally forgotten by mankind. It is to be noted that, that the scribe who showed appreciation and understanding of what our Lord had said was told by our Lord that he was not far from the kingdom of God. He had the perception to see the truth of what our Lord had just taught. 
and this very understanding put him on the way to the kingdom of God. There are so many who do not even see the truth of revelation, nor therefore do they accept it. The first thing we must do if we are to order our lives aright is to accept wholeheartedly the truth of our Lord's teaching, precisely because it is the teaching of the Son of God made man. Being his teaching, it is therefore most true. Therefore, having accepted it with a full religious assent, we must make it our life's work to put it into practice. There is this to be said too. I suspect that one of the distinctive features of the, re of the revealed religion of Judaism and Christianity is that God is to be the object not, not just of our awe, our reverence and service, but of our love. I do not think this is readily found outside revealed religion, except in the case of those religions influenced by historical revelation. We should have reverence and awe before God because he is our infinite God, but at the same time this infinite God invites us actually to come close to him and to love him. It is to be a loving reverence as towards a most revered and loving father. The one almighty God called his chosen people into a friendship with him, into an intimacy of reverent and obedient love. Moses was his friend. His people were described by certain prophets as his spouse and God as their husband. Christ is the full revelation of this. As St. Paul writes in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, In him is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and we are called to be his chosen and intimate friends. Every day let us set out to fulfill our vocation and to love the good God as fully as we can that day. As our Lord said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Our love is manifested in the recognition of God's supreme authority over our lives and our obedience to his will. It is shown in our total assent to the truth he has revealed and in our daily fulfilment of the duties he gives us in our vocation or in the circumstances of his providence. Let us therefore resolve to love him with all our heart and in obedience to him to love our neighbour as ourselves.